So today is the day. I am going to attempt to make a knife in a day and also deadlift 70% of my max 50 times. To do that, I'm going to need ample supply of Dragon Energy, which I have 100% pure. So I don't think this is gonna to be too big of an issue, but it could be more difficult than I think it will be. First of all, I'm doing it because I feel like this will show me how much that I can accomplish in a day. Sometimes I get a few things done and then I don't do anything for the rest of the day because I'm like, ah, I got enough done. But by doing this challenge, I feel like it will show me what I'm capable of doing in a day. It's also unique and I don't think anyone else has ever attempted to do 50 deadlifts with 70% of their max and make a knife in a day. So I like being at the cutting edge of history. So let's go over the rules for this challenge, or at least the rules that I'll be holding myself to. The first rule is to make a knife that is up to your quality standards for sale. So what that means to me is that I cannot cut any corners in this knife. It needs to be just as good, or at least at par, with the knives that I will sell from my shop to a customer. And that carries a lot of weight for me. I don't want to make anything that's subpar and put it in someone else's hands that they gave me their hard earned money for. So that in itself is gonna be a pretty major challenge because with the time constraint, uh, being able to get all the pieces of that puzzle together could be difficult. The second component to this deal is gonna be the deadlifts. I'll be deadlifting 321 pounds 50 times. That is around 70% of my one rep max and that is the rule, 70% of your one rep max. 50 times. As far as the type of deadlifts we'll be doing, I'm going to be using a sumo stance, but you can use conventional. Whatever deadlift that you can perform in an IPF meet, you can perform in this challenge. I'll be using a 28 and a half millimeter Texas power bar along with some cast iron IGF plates. The reason that I will be deadlifting 321 pounds instead of what it looks like as 315 is because I have weighed each of these plates like a nerd and they do not weigh 45 pounds. I know, I was shocked too. I normally like to do my deadlifts with shorts on. However, today working with power tools, I'll be wearing long pants. So don't think I'm a weirdo who works out with long pants all the time. An extra point or two when it comes to making the knife today, I am planning on doing every step, including tempering and the glue up within this time allotment. I will, however, put some timestamps on my board so that I can get a number that is with tempering and a number that is without, that is a time number with and without tempering. I'm doing this because I want to have an apples to apples comparison to anyone else who ever tries this challenge. Tempering times can differ greatly depending on the type of steel or just the processes that the person is used to using. Some people do two one and a half hour cycles. Some people do two two hour cycles. So to avoid this being a major constraint to the performance of this test, I will have a with tempering number and a without tempering number at the end of this challenge. All right, so while I was going over what today's objective is gonna be, I cut out the blank and drilled some holes in the tang before heat treating. I'll be using this checkering file to put some jimping in the spine of the knife so that your thumb has some good grip when using this knife. I've really enjoyed this checkering file and I'll put a link to it in the description below because a lot of people have been asking me about where I got that file. And surprise, surprise, I got it on Amazon. I've been using my file guide as well as a backstop for that checkering file and also as a backstop for the sharpening choil that I put in there with a chainsaw file. That's actually a 5 30 seconds of an inch chainsaw file. So we're about 45 minutes in and we're already going into the forge for heat treat. We're gonna do two normalizing cycles on this blade. I'll only show one here, but I'll basically be getting the blade up to somewhere around 1600 degrees in the first one and letting it cool to room temperature. And then going a little below that, letting it cool to room temperature again. Before the last heat cycle, I will be quenching the blade in parks 50. So I get the blade up to its quenching temperature, quench it into parks 50 for about four to five seconds and then I transfer it to my straightening plates as quickly as I possibly can so that I can clamp this blade straight as it cools. You have a very short window of time to perform this operation on a knife. If you wait too long, 
the knife could get fully hardened and actually crack during the straightening or holding straight process with those plates. So we got the blade in the straightening jig, it came out nice and straight. And before we go to the tempering oven, I'm going to drill the holes in my handle scales so that I can be working on the handles while we are tempering the knife. This is just a little time saving trick here so that we can be efficient with our time today since we're trying to make this knife in one day. We'll now be clamping this blade between two pieces of angle iron after we have our holes drilled in the handle scales. And what this will do is hold the blade nice and straight during the tempering process. Last thing I want is for the blade to start warping in one direction or the other, even if it's a slight amount during the heating of the tempering process. We'll be tempering at 214 degrees Celsius for an hour and a half cycle twice. The tempering time is the time that's actually going to be the most annoying during this build process because I won't be able to get much work done during this time. While I'm waiting for my tempering oven to warm up, you can see I got a good deal of reps there on the deadlifts. During the tempering of the knife, I can work on the handle scales since I have those holes drilled. I can profile out the handle scales. I can grind the front bevels on those handle scales and sand them and then also counter bore where I'll be installing my Corby fasteners in the sides of the handle scales. I can do all of these things in preparation for when the knife comes out of the tempering oven. So here I am cleaning up the front of the scales with a 320 grit belt and then marking these scales with my height scribe so that I have a line to grind to when putting the angles on the front of these scales. I start off with a 60 grit belt and then I briefly move to a 320 grit belt just to knock out the bulk of the 60 grit scratches. After I move off this grinder, I will be hand sanding the front of the scales up to a thousand grit hand sanded finish. I breezed through the first 30 or so reps of these deadlifts and I came in hot, so to speak, and got a lot of them done early. Towards the end of the day, getting the last 10 or so uh, was very challenging and I was definitely getting worn out and sore towards the end of this challenge. So here you see I'm sanding up the front of the handle scales starting at a 320 grit paper moving on to a 600 and then finally what you see here is a thousand grit finish. These are the counter bores for the Corby fasteners. If you're going to be installing Corby fasteners or loveless uh, fasteners on your knives. I highly suggest you getting the counter bore from Pops Knife Supply. That thing is awesome. It's way better than the homemade version I made and the Corby fasteners fit perfect every time. What I'm doing here is I'm just getting my equipment ready for when the knife is done tempering. I want to have all of the prep done so that I can get it out of the tempering oven and go straight to the surface grinder. So like I mentioned during the tempering process, I took that opportunity to get the rep count up and we're getting up to rep number 40 at 321. Well, this is a little harder than I thought it would be. My thumbs are about to fall off because I normally pull with a hook grip and uh, I'm going to try taping them up a little more. You can see I've already tried taping them a little bit, but I have about 40 of the 50 deadlifts done. Start off fairly aggressive. Um, I think I'm going to finish the last 10 probably with singles or doubles uh, just because I'm getting pretty worn out. With these long pants and a belt, it makes wearing this lifting belt kind of uncomfortable. So I've been doing most of them beltless. Right now, the knife is in its first tempering cycle still. I was able to get a little bit of work done on the handle. About an hour and 15 minutes of work done on the handle. So you can take that out of the tempering time if you want to compare apples to apples, a non-tempering uh, completion of this challenge. You know, it's still early. It's about 11 o'clock still and I'm getting through here, but I'm kind of worried about how long the grinding of the bevels is going to take me. And also I want to, you know, put my maker's mark in this and etch it and stonewash it and do all that jazz. So I'm a little nervous, but we'll see how it goes. So I took the top off of my PID controller here just because the ambient temperature in the garage is super hot 
and I wanted to put a fan blowing in that direction just to make sure the SSR stays cool and doesn't crap out on me during this process. Once the first tempering cycle was done, I removed the knife and cooled it to room temperature in the water as quickly as I could and got it back in the tempering oven for its second cycle. This is what the knife looks like outside of the two tempering cycles. We go straight over to the surface grinder and start knocking off any layer of decarb or discoloration on the flats of the knife. I start off with a 120 grit ceramic belt, then I move to a 280 grit gator belt, and then eventually move to a cork belt, a 400 grit cork belt. Once I get one side done, I tape it off and then put the tape side down on the surface grinder to get the other side nice and smooth as well. If you do not tape it, I found that the magnetic chuck will scratch your finish, even though it's made out of aluminum. So while surface grinding, I was feeling a little spry and decided to get my rep count up. So I did the safest deadlifts I've ever done because I have eye protection, ear protection, and breathing protection. So those were fun. And then I moved back over to the SGA to finish off my finish. This surface you're seeing here is a 400 grit cork belt finish. After I have the flats done, I move on to a 220 grit J-Flex belt just to get the spine and the edge of the blade cleaned up. I like getting these up to around 200 grit finish before I start my bevels. Using my height scribe and a little bit of layout fluid, I mark my center line on this edge. This will be the target that I grind to. I really like using the height scribe for this operation opposed to the centerline scribe that I was previously using because I can come back to my granite plate and remark that centerline throughout the grinding process. Sometimes that line gets a little bit uh, faded or knocked off during the grinding process when some abrasives hit it, so I can come back to the surface plate and remark that centerline so I have a nice clean target to grind to. The first belt that I'm using on this knife is a 60 grit ceramic belt, and this is the finish that it produces. The purpose of this belt is to knock off the bulk of the material, and I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch between the top of the bevels and the spine of the knife. I then move on to a Hermes 150 grit belt, where I bring it all the way up to the spine. This is a J-Flex belt, so it allows me to get a nice curve in the plunge lines of this knife. In this case, I went straight from the 150 grit J-Flex belt to a surface conditioning belt by 3M, a Scotch-Brite belt. And this is the finish that it produced. We're going to cut off the grinding at this point and move on to the etching and the acid stone washing. I could have brought this finish up to a 400 grit finish, but I kind of like to have some of the grind lines visible in my stone wash from time to time, especially on a working knife. And since we're under a time constraint, stopping at a 150 grit J-Flex and then moving to the surface conditioning belt is way faster. During the stone washing of this knife, I left a little excess alcohol on the blade before putting in the acid. And then I had to take it out and scrub it down with a steel wool multiple times to get an even finish. I do that from time to time. I don't let the alcohol dry and I notice that it affects my stone washing reaction in the acid. So I let it sit in my stone washing tumbler for about 15 minutes before moving on to the glue up. I'll be using Combat Abrasives Rogue Epoxy. And the major reason why I'll be using this epoxy for this build specifically is because it has a working time of 30 minutes and a cure time of an hour. So I need a fairly fast setting epoxy to be able to complete this challenge. The glue up overall went fairly well. I got all of the surfaces coated with glue and was able to get both of these Corby fasteners lined up and tightened down gently. The nice thing about Corby fasteners is you don't need a lot of clamps after you are done with your glue. I used some alcohol to clean up the front of the handle scales to make sure there is no excess epoxy just hanging out in the front of the scales. So here is a close up of the directions of Rogue Epoxy you can see that it has a cure time of one hour. So we are gonna put this to the test today. Okay, so we're at 4.42 in the afternoon. 
We're pretty close to being done with the deadlifts. I have one more deadlift left. And I gotta tell you, the last 10 uh, were pretty, pretty rough on me. I can tell my body is not gonna be happy with me tomorrow. But I got one more deadlift to do and the glue is drying. So I used this opportunity to go eat some food, but the glue is almost done. It's been about 51 minutes since I mixed it up. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. I have a sample of the glue over here that I can touch with my finger and it's still slightly tacky. So I'm gonna wait just a little bit longer and then start working gently on this handle. Having the mechanical fasteners makes me feel a lot better and I'll just make sure not to get it hot at all and I think I'll be in pretty good shape. So like I mentioned, the glue was still a little tacky, but I think if I'm very careful, it won't affect the long-term performance of this knife. I gently cut off the heads of the brass Corby fasteners and then came over to the belt center to get the profile of the handle scales flush with the profile of the metal knife. When I get close to touching the steel, I normally use a finer grit belt so as not to put big scratches in the spine of the knife. Once I have the handle scales flush with the knife, I start rounding my handle scales a long ways on a 60 grit ceramic belt. Once they're nice and rounded, I use a scalloped one inch J-Flex belt. I think these are generally cling spore belts to get it nice and radiused on the top and bottom of the knife. This is what it looks like straight off the grinder. I then clamp it down in my knife vise with some pieces of leather to avoid scratching the blade and then start with a 320 grit sandpaper moving up to a thousand. You'll notice on the sides of the knife I use a hard backing. This is basically just a piece of steel behind my sandpaper and I do this so that the Corby fasteners don't get domed over. The Kiranite is so soft in comparison to the metal that if you just use your thumbs to do this grinding you will actually create a dome where those Corby fastener heads are and you'll be able to feel it on your handle. Once the handle is done being sanded, I ballast all the entire knife, that is oil it up, and then put my sharpening jig on it and sharpen it on my wind water-cooled sharpener. I really like this machine. It works very good if you have a sharpening choil. If you don't have a sharpening choil, uh, you do run the risk of gumming up your plunge lines. So I get a very nice wheel finish, uh, which is around a 200 or 300 grit finish on the edge, then strop it and it came out razor sharp, being able to easily cut paper and easily shave hair off my arm. All right, one deadlift away from finishing this challenge in style. The confetti that I ordered for this last deadlift did not come in the mail and I apologize to all my viewers for not having a shower of confetti on my 50th deadlift of this challenge. But even with that shortfall, I'm pretty happy with how this knife turned out, especially considering the time constraints that we were under today. Well it wasn't easy, but we got it done. In a time of 10 hours and 45 minutes, we were able to finish one knife and 50 deadlifts. If you remove the pure tempering time, it came out to eight hours and 10 minutes, and that is compensating for the amount of time that I worked on the handle during tempering. So now that we've proven it can be done, I challenge anyone with a bar and some plates to see what kind of time they can put up. Make sure y'all flood your favorite knife makers YouTube channel comment sections, because I feel like a few of them can probably do pretty good at this challenge. Lastly, I'm gonna be running a giveaway for this knife, and it will be coupled with a Kydex sheath. I'll be using an online service to run this contest for the first time, so I hope it goes fairly smooth. It will not be a requirement to subscribe to this YouTube channel for an entry, however, I'd really appreciate it if you did. To enter the contest, please follow the link in the description below. You must be 18 years of age or older, and I will only cover shipping in the lower 48 states of the United States of America. Anything outside of that, you'll have to cover the additional charge in shipping on your own. This contest will end on Friday, July 10th, 2020. So I hope you all really enjoyed this build. If you did, hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Until the next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.